Oh, uh, there's a first year rolling over there already. <laughs> Luckily, it's the better kind of rolling. All right, so I'm going to plow through my incredibly disorganized notes here. Rolling. Oh, that's not a fursuiter. That's just well. You, yeah, you're wearing a, you're wearing a tire fursuit. You are now an anthropomorphic tire. Congratulations. We will have registration change your badge as your species. Anyway. Welcome everybody to this lovely con that we're, we're, we have gotten going here in Reno. Um, hopefully the hotel has treated everybody pretty well so far. We've, we've heard of a couple little snafus, but I think everything's been, does everybody's been pretty well treated, I think, I hope, yes? Yeah, okay. There's lots of fun stuff to do upstairs that you guys have probably already found. Um, so the very first thing I'd like to do is I'd of course like to thank everybody whose hard work is making all this happen. All the people in registration who are trying to plow through, everybody who is still registering at con, making sure they can get their stuff. Um, I want to thank all of the uh, tech crew for getting all this set up and dragging it up here all over that rather tall mountain. And um, I want to thank all of the dealer room staff and all the panelists. And our dealer room will be open pretty soon. I'll get to that in a moment. And I also want to thank our game room staff over there and our fursuit lounge staff as well. A um, couple more people I'd like to thank. There are quite a few people around the country who have done, a, done quite a bit of work and quite a bit of promoting trying to push our con and make sure people know that it exists. And I think they're responsible for the fact that we started here with 461 people pre-registered, and I believe at this point we're up over 500. Woo! Which is pretty darn good for a first year con, from what I'm told. Um, the, biggest, I, the biggest point that we need to cover, to make sure everybody knows, fursuits on the casino floor. We've talked about it over and over and over again, and we just wanna make it absolutely clear that everybody knows that Anywhere where you can see a slot machine is not a place you can be in fursuit. There are several state laws that make that forbidden. Namely, it's considered uh, bringing, uh, bringing attention to gambling for children. And that, that is a big no-no in this state. Um, however, anywhere else in the casino, except the arcade because they have a no masks policy, Everywhere else in the casino is fursuit friendly and security has been instructed to not harass fursuiters until they cross that magic line. And that magic line is on the arcade level above us, or sorry, on the casino level above us, we're on the arcade level. On the casino level above us, the elevators are where you need to stop. You go no farther than the elevators. The bowling alley is fine. In fact, they're giving us a pretty fat discount. Um, all you have to do is show your badge. The go-karts are also fine for fursuits. They are perfectly okay with that. Although, from a being a fursuit builder, I will tell you, make sure that your tail is not dragging on the ground so you don't have to remake it. And make sure that it's not pressed up against the engine either so you don't have to remake it. Um, the go-karts are also giving us a small discount. I believe they've knocked the price a dollar down to five fifty per race. And they've also politely asked that we try to get through. They know fursuiters are slower, but try to get through as quickly as you can so they can continue turning over for new, for new people. And I think that's it for news for fursuiters specifically. Uh, we obviously have a headless lounge over there at N10. Most of you have probably already found it. You saw the blue curtain. It's pretty obvious. Um, and the next thing to go over is this odd little convention space that we have that you might have found to be a bit strange. The goal for this particular con is to try to create as big of a space to put as many people together socializing as possible, which is why we have deliberately made as few separated rooms as we could. Gaming is a separate room simply because it tends to get very noisy. Fursuit Lounge is a separate room for obvious reasons. And we have two panel rooms over in the corner down there. Um, one of them is dedicated to be a quiet space during, during dance hours. 
So it's just a space where people can go and calm down and get away from some of the noise. The other one is a dedicated panel room all, all weekend long for panelists who don't want to be up here. We've tried to encourage most of our panelists to actually use this stage right here so that everybody in this room can at least passively enjoy their panel even if they're not participating. And they may wander over and be like, oh, that's interesting. I think I'll go listen to that. Also, the dealer's room is behind that wall right there. That wall will be coming down in about 45 minutes for the dealer's room to be open. Once that is down, it is just an open space. Anybody can get in easily and wander around and you can look over and see the dealers and the dealers can look over and see the convention. They're not buried in a room somewhere where they can't enjoy the con. So those are some experimental things. I think they're going to work out well. Um, next, we have set up a little bit of a photo shoot space so far. We're still adding, well, I think we've set it up. The blackjack tables that you see in the corner over there are provided to be props. So if you want to take some, some fursuit photos and make it look like you're gambling, you are more than welcome to use those backjack tables to do so. That's why they brought them in for us. Um, if you want some poker chips, I believe we have some in the game room that you can lay out on the table and make it look more like you're actually gambling. Just don't actually do any gambling because that would be illegal. And we do have a professional photographer that will be on the way. Um, they will have some hours here. The hours are posted in, in registration right now. And I believe we can have a sign made and put over where the photo shoot will be. The photo shoot's basically gonna be just on the side of the stage here in that space that's still somewhat empty. Uh, the hours for that are expected to be Friday from five to eight, Saturday from 12 to three, and Sunday from 11 to four. On the note of photographers, we also have a request for anybody here who enjoys taking photos and enjoys editing them and enjoys making clean photos. If you are interested in contributing photos that you are taking live now at this con, we will have a slideshow computer set up fairly shortly with a projector pointed over there running a live slideshow for the entire con that will continue updating as photographers add more pictures to it. Um, we just simply ask that you that you that you police your photos and you get them trimmed down to you know not ten photos that are nearly the same thing and you know, that kind of thing. Put a reasonable number of photos and make them reasonably different and just so people can kind of enjoy history of the con as it's happening. Um, uh, we also like to ask any photographers who are here to uh, send an email to the convention after the convention is over to a link for any photos you've taken at the con. We would love to add it to our photo gallery and host it on our own webpage so that people can get a chance to see the con if they didn't get to experience it themselves. Um, next note I have, the game room is accepting um, donations to help um, stock anything further. We're pretty good for video games. We're a little shy on board games still. If anybody happened to bring any board games with them or video games they'd like to donate that we don't already have, and they want to, or sorry, not donate, loan. If anybody wants to loan those to us, then the game room staff will be more than happy to write down that you have donated it and keep track of it and make sure that it gets back to you. And if for some reason you want to actually donate something, we will happily accept it. Um, I have a note here, the fursuit lounge is up and running. Everything is going. I believe all of the fans are on, I think. Um, everything is up and running. The head tree that's in there is a tad weak. That was something that I that um, I actually built. It was, it's my design. It's kind of my fault that it's a little weak. Um, but as far as I can tell, once four or five heads are on there, the other ports will strengthen up and it should be pretty functional still. There's at least a minimum amount of air coming out of everything. It should still dry your head out decently, especially because we have a very, very dry climate here. Um, I talked about the rooms over there, so I'll skip that. And uh, people have been asking about the all the goodies that we're giving away or that we're including with people's registration. The hip flask, the really cool deck of cards that Shook designed, the, uh, the poster, and the t-shirts. All four of those items are not available for sale separately. We want to reserve them so that people who are paying for sponsor and patron will be able to get them. 
And even with that, I think we, we, we got a bigger turnout than we expected and we're probably going to run out of some things. If we run out, we are going to start issuing rain checks and we will happily mail the things to you post-con. All four of those things we made sure are stuff we can order more of if we run out. You'll just have to wait until after the con to get it and we will, we will mail it to you, we'll pay the shipping and nothing, no extra nonsense like that. The only thing we are unable to get more of is con books. So if you are not a con book person and you have a con book, if, if you're just not a con book person and you don't have much interest in hanging on to it, um, you're welcome to donate it back and we'll hand it to people who are more interested in getting them. I believe we still have some left, but we are running low already. Again, bigger turnout than we expected. And for the con book, we will also be posting a PDF of that con book on the website right after the con is over, so that anybody can enjoy it. Um, I have a note here that I need to tell everybody directions on how to get to the go-karts in Fursuit, because the normal route for getting to the go-kart track does cross the casino floor, which means you cannot go there in Fursuit. The way to get the roundabout way to get there, and we will post the instructions in the game room, or in the Headless Lounge shortly, the instructions to get to the go-karts is walk past the arcade and out the doors, past the arcade and the wedding chapel that's in the corner of the casino downstairs. Go past both of those, walk out the doors, continue walking outward until while looking left, you can see the big tower for the, that giant swing that's outside. Walk toward that tower and you will find the go-karts. The go-kart track manages the go-karts and the outdoor mini golf and that giant swing. They have offered us discounts for all three of those things, but you have to go to the go-kart area to be able to get those discounts. Apparently that's the only place they can apply those discounts. I'm not sure why. Um, they reduced the price of this, the giant swing down to $15. That is unfortunately not fursuit friendly because they're worried about people's heads becoming projectiles. <laughs> <laughs> And um, the, the mini golf, however, they're perfectly fine with fursuits if you want to go do so. I think the mini golf was, was it $4 or $3? Do you remember, Pony? Four? Four dollars. And the go-karts are $5.50 per, per round. Um, okay, uh, we've got a couple more things. Uh, we've invited for the record to provide our actual DJs and our dances. Um, they've done a fantastic job from what I've seen operating rainforest stances. I think they're going to do a fantastic job here as well. They've also done a fantastic job helping to promote our con and get the word out. So we've, we've doubly lucked out with them in that regard. As you can see what you're sitting on, we have a pretty large dance floor that they had plenty of panels for, which is fantastic. But for the record, I believe they're going to be showing up in an hour or two. They are currently driving from Seattle, and they'll definitely be here by tonight. Um, we've also got a bar over there that we've been able to set up that is not open now, it's, but it, they're leaving it partially set up so they don't have to set it up again. Um, that whole little kind of lounge area over there, we're calling that the speakeasy, and we intend to have that be the place where people sit and, sit and visit during the dance if they don't want to actually dance. Uh, the bar there, they do have a couple of drink specials. They even have a special for uh, filling that flask that we gave some of the patrons. Uh, they agreed to, to give us a little discount price on that. Um, and uh, obviously, if you're a suitor, you'll need to pop your head briefly so they can check your ID and make sure you're actually 21. And the last thing we have is that our guest of honor, Wolf Pup TK, I, is he here yet? Is TK not here yet? Okay, he's still on his way. But our guest of honor, TK, is um, going to try to do some fundraising for his for his first for life charity, which is um, a they collect money for the Red Cross and donate that back. And he does so by attempting to raise money for the Red Cross through Fursuit Performance. If he'd like to get a bunch of suitors together, uh, the time for that is 4 p.m. He'd like to get a bunch of first suitors together today at four to do some filming so that they can then assemble that together into something for a further fundraiser. The charity for this con is the local animal shelter, the Nevada Humane Society. 
Um, every 100% of everything in the charity portion of the art auction, of course, goes to them. And any money that the convention has left over after the end, after all of the dust settles that we don't need for next year's operations, we are just going to simply hand to them. And at the rate things are going, it looks like we will have a decent amount of money to hand them at post-con. So I think, we're, I think we're actually raising some money for charity and not just breaking even. But I don't know yet. I have to go through all the accounting to find out. And the last thing, we just got some news here like half an hour ago that the pool in the hotel is supposed to be open on Memorial Day, but they are finishing opening it now. The weather cooperated and they decided to open it early. And I, last I heard, they were just buttoning up all of the space and waiting for a health inspection to open it today. Um, I think they said the hours are 10 to 6. We were, we were not expecting to have a pool, but we got lucky. And next year it won't be a problem because they are working on an indoor pool over the next year. So we won't even have to worry about it from the future. Um, that's the last of my notes, I believe. Uh, there's nothing else I can think of off the top of my head either. So everybody, have a great time. <laughs>